his own heart that will feed his flock. Yes. And how many of you have been fed by his ministry? How many of you have been fed by his preaching? Amen. 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 And if you've been fed, then you ought to thank God for someone that's able to preach the word of God. I met him personally myself, my uncle Levi Stevenson. Uh, oh man, I tell you, uh, it was a young man sitting in the circle of mature men and just sitting still with my mouth closed and just listening. You dare not say too much when you got two powerhouses in the same room. You just sit back and you learn because you never know where you may be. Right. And so I met him and he was to me always a scholar. He didn't just look at the text. He went into the text and broke it down. Now, how many of you know we live in a town where people do not regard the word of God? Amen. Come on, so look at it. People do not regard the scriptures as being true. And we live all kinds of things. I think the mature people, the, more, the mothers, the elderly people can say, yes, son, we're living in a what? Different time. Come on, I'm the only one saying this today. Do we live in a different time? Is it, is it the same like it was when you were coming up? It isn't the same anymore. More. People used to tell me they used to leave their houses open and yeah. people they yeah. could walk by and nobody go into their houses. Right. They knew to leave the porch light on because they were sick and find nobody was on and nobody would bother them. Now you got to almost disguise yourself as being home to make sure your home isn't broken in. You got to put a dog, a dog out front or a sign that says mad dog. You ain't got no dog now. But you got the sign to, to be a deterrent to stop people because we live in a different time. So I want to be able to be encouraging today to you with the word of God. But at the same time, I want to encourage our pastor and his wife. And, and I want to give honor to my pastor here, Pastor Elder James Amen. And the deacons and the ministers and the saints of God, the church of God, by faith, we thank you for being. I'd like to give honor to them for being here today. And, and, and I'm not going to be before you long. If you got your Bibles, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, and we're going to read from verses 1 through 4. First Peter chapter 5. If you got your Bible, if, if you do have, I want you to follow me. And I want you to see what the Lord will say to us in reference to who God chooses over our people and their charge to lead us so that we can know that we're in a security blanket with God. Right. Can I talk to somebody and tell you that God is not in to let anybody just handle you? Look at your name and say, God is not into that anybody just handle me. When God chooses somebody, it's specific because he loves you. Let me ask you a question. Would you leave your children with anybody? No. Mothers, mothers, would you leave your children with anybody? Fathers, would you leave your kids with anybody? My grandmother's in here. Do I got any grandmothers in here? Would you leave your grandkids with anybody? Because you've got to know that you're responsible to what will happen to them. Watch this. Under your care. I want you to know God is responsible for you today. And he's responsible to what's under his care. First Peter chapter 5. I'm reading in NIV. And then we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Watch what it reads in the NIV. To the elders among you, I appear as fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering whom also will share in glory or share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock and uh, that uh, is under your care. Mm -hmm. Watch over them. And because you must, I'm sorry, not because you must, but because you are what? Willing as God wants you to be. Not persuading dishonesty, not persuading or pursuing dishonesty, dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will yeah. never fade away. Y'all yeah. see that? that? If I do according to this, when the chief shepherd appears, there will be a glory that he has already have will shine on me. 
Can I tell you, it's a reason why you're standing strong. There's a reason why you're not compromising. There's a reason why the righteousness of God stands up in you right. when you feel threatened to lay it down. Right. Because God is saying to you, I have not left you unforgotten. Right. I will make sure that all the sufferings, all the trouble you endure, when he appears, look at your neighbor and say, he's coming, y'all. He's, he's coming. coming. <laughs> the old mother say, he's coming out the wild, children. He's coming. He's coming. When he appears, the glory that he's crowned with. He said, you shall receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. I look at so many people trying to fix their self, makeup, perfumes, eyelashes, hips, tips, fingers, tips. You know, and then me, we got to get all buff. But this stuff get old, y'all. It droops, it falls, it folds, it, it you got to do a lot of stuff. But he said, it's not going to fade away. Father, thank you for the word of God. I pray in Jesus' name Amen. that you help me communicate your word to encourage somebody today. Somebody may feel like they're insecure. They don't have your care over them. And somebody feel like they're unprotected, uncovered. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Let the word strengthen them, encourage them that they know that they are protected, that you are their shepherd as well as the shepherds that shepherd them. In Jesus' name. Say that the blood of Jesus is against you. Put on the whole arm of God that we can withstand. And Father, we have already overcome the wicked one. Yes. He is a defeated foe. So we take authority now in this atmosphere. Yes. And Father, we, are, we decree your power in this place. That no principalities and powers of demonic hosts will come and invade itself against your word, your will, your grace. Dear God, we thank you for this grace. In Jesus' name, somebody say with me, amen. 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 My subject today, I'm not going to be before you long, is an elder to an elder. An elder to an elder. Now, my, my friend said that I only got an hour window. Uh, I don't think Baptists keep you on in church that long. At least not all the Baptist churches I went to, they, they give you a good 30 minutes and they're going to give you all the theology, the historical, the Old Testament survey. They're going to give you all the harmonies in that 30 minutes. Uh, and I got to now govern myself <laughs> accordingly. Amen. So if you see a, do a, do a, a door cell battery up here about to explode, uh, you, you got to now understand that as my uncle said, I'm trying to pack wet into a pipe. I'm trying to pack a whole gallon <laughs> into a pipe. But 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 1 <coughs> and verse, I mean chapter 5 verses 1 through 4 he says, the elders which are among you, I exalt you. Who I am also an elder. I, I get my subject from this topic. From an elder to an elder. He says in whom I am also an elder. Uh, Jim Elliott said he is, no, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep. To gain what he cannot lose. It is what Peter alluded to when he said for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourself likewise. Uh, in the same mind as, as we are living as a believer in the Lord don't ever think in your mind that you will not be tested that you will not be tried that there will not be stuff at you and can I talk to somebody and tell you there is no age limit on how your test comes you can be 50, 60, 20, 30 you can be 1 or 2 even a child got a trial I remember when I was young juvenile delinquent where I was with my mom and how I was mischievous and how I was tempted to be more mischievous because of my peers and as a result of me consistently going out there in my mischievous ways I saw how the enemy could have had his way with me to where I could have been the fool to lose something that I can't afford to lose and yet in God's infinite sovereign will he was able to call me into his grace June the 7th or June the 7th when I got out of boot camp but June the 11th when I gave my life to the Lord and through that walk he has showed me things in my walk, in my life, in my decision making, even in my family, even as a father, even as a Christian. He has shown me things in my life that lets me know I need him more now than I ever needed him ever in my life. He has shown me mistakes.
mistakes that have caused me pain. He has shown me decisions that I yet still have to live with. But yet in his grace, he has umbrellaed me in a way to where he says to Peter, or as he said it to him, you will deny me. But I already prayed that your faith fail you not. Can I tell you, I'm talking about myself, but yet I'm talking about Peter. Peter writes this book with the experience that he was walking with Jesus. Peter writes this book with the experience that he denied Jesus. Peter writes this book or this letter with the idea that he was one of the twelve given power, given wisdom, given the authority to now, watch this y'all, proclaim the words of God. And so in Acts chapter 1, on the day of Pentecost, as Jesus began to tell them to wait to the upper room and they should receive power, chapter 1, chapter 2, Pentecost takes place and Peter stands up in chapter 2 of Acts to proclaim the gospel because they thought that they were drunken because something spiritual took place that they didn't have no understanding about and that's kind of how we do when we don't understand things we criticize stuff but Peter in the midst of the criticism he says brother I know we look crazy I know me shouting looks stupid I know me carrying my Bible is not common in this day and age in the government that does not honor God I know when I pray and I shout you may have to fan me but brother we're not crazy or we're not drunk this is what the Lord already said that would happen to those that would seek him this is the salvation of Christ and Peter begins to preach that gospel Amen. and as he preaches the gospel the Bible said thousands of souls were added to the church and the church exploded Amen. man y'all got to see this now because I'm, I'm about ready to go because when, when you see that Jesus Christ came down to fulfill the will of God and then he now brings his messengers called apostles or apollos, sunk ones, missionaries, evangelists, gospel spreaders out in the land to proclaim the word of God. Jesus understood that this mandate that he was bringing was from God and it cannot be handled foolishly. I may find myself in a position where I may be compromised. You may find yourself in a position where you may be compromised, but the Lord says, repent. Restart yourself all back over again because this is so precious. You can't afford to stay outside of the cover. Look at your neighbor and say, I need to stay under the blood. Oh God, I feel this thing. I need to connect with my God that keeps me. And so it is here that Peter comes with this experience and he writes to the people. Just imagine, guys, you, you know a man that have knowledge. You know a man that has experience. Y'all know when they, we, we, we're in a political season right now. And so we are trying to find the right candidate to lead our country. We are, we're divided into two parties, Democrat and Republican. And look how, look how serious it is because people will literally not come to church if you're Republican or not come to church if you're Democrat. And they will allow political issues to supersede scripture. Yeah. Yeah. All because they want who they want in power. But the problem with that, mothers and, and fathers, is that the ones we're choosing they're not perfect. And though they may sound good in the beginning. Peter, you sound good, son. I'll die for you, Jesus. Peter, you look good, man, but I'm sorry to tell you, you ain't matured there yet. No, no, no. I will give my life, Peter. Peter. I'm a man and I should not lie. I know you're going to fall. How many times we look for the best? But yet we grab the dust. I hear Peter trying to be the candidate to lead God's people. We're looking for our candidates in this political season. But can I tell you, look to God. Thank you. Your Thank candidate you. Thank you. Is God. Thank you. Not Mitt Romney, not to uh, uh, Bernie, not to the other lady that's running, not to Camille, not to none of these. And uh, there may be Democrats. So we're not Donald Trump. The Bible says God set a man up. Yes, it did. Yes, he set a man up. Come on, you talk to somebody again. And then he said, He has the heart of the king in his name. Come here, Moses. I'm a senior to Pharaoh, but I'm a heart in the heart of his heart to show my power. Can I talk to somebody? to show you his power. He'll make the situation hard, Peter. He'll make you look like you ain't with God, Peter. Oh, I got to talk to somebody. But yet the glory. The glory of God. We cannot allow our external 
been a tall man. Yes. Sometimes it gets hard. And it does, Mama Boom, but His grace is sufficient. Sometimes it looks crazy, but our sufficiency is in Christ. I can't trust in the sweetest sound. Thank you. Look. Well, holy lead. He said, Christ, the solid rock, all of the ground. Thank you, Sam. So here I got to get out of here. Peter was called upon the rock. It was this same Peter, y'all know, that upon this rock I will build my church. One name means leaf, but Petra means rock stone. We know that Peter, as some Catholicists think, wasn't the first pope. We understood that when God says that I'm going to build my rock upon this church, he was talking about the revelation. The revelation of what? Of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the prophets have prophesied the Messiah coming. Now that the Messiah is here, he has to establish his kingship. How does he do that? By fulfilling scripture. Last but not least, as he gave everybody the sign on the third day, I'm going to rise. Christ did it. 15, that's 15 said, Christ was preached. Christ was crucified. Christ died. He got up. And about 500 saw him. And even myself. And if Christ be not raised, then our gospel is in vain. Mm -hmm. yeah. If Christ be not risen, then we baptize unto death. Everything hinges on the fulfilled word of Christ. Because that word is the word that says God cannot lie. Whatever he says, that's what he'll do. If he says you're healed, you're healed. If he says you're delivered, you're delivered. He is not like man. The problem is, because we got this hyper-Pentecostalism of this high spirituality, everybody wants to be healed, everybody wants to be a millionaire, everybody wants to be great, everybody wants to be a prophet, everybody wants to be an apostle, everybody, everybody, oh, I'm a bishop, I'm an apostle, elder, sister, brother, cousin, mama, I'm all this other stuff, but the first thing I want to bring to your attention is, from an elder to an elder, the first thing about an elder is that he is not an artist. He is an elder. Yes, sir. He's matured. He's exposed to the sufferings of Christ. Right. He's exposed to the affliction. Listen to what he said in verse 1. I got to go there. Uh, I got to go there because if I don't, y'all going to say I'm not scripturally, I'm not giving you integrity. Listen to what he says. Uh, look at verse 1. The elder which are among you, I exalt you. Who am also in what? Elder. Yeah. All right. So he says an elder from a elder. Y'all going to preach with me? I don't know. Yeah. I only got about probably 20 minutes to 15. But from an elder to a elder. elder. And so I'm an elder. And you an elder. So while I'm talking to the church, I'm talking to my elder. From a mature preacher, Elder Stevenson, mm -hmm. to a much a maturated preacher, <coughs> Pastor Trotter. He says to Pastor Trotter, he says, I exalt, whom also the elder, I plead, I urge, I have witnessed Christ, and I know your sufferings, and I have suffered with you, but I want you to continue to feed God's flock. Was this, why is it so important? Because, Deacon Lord, if we don't eat, Deacon Lord, we cannot be the leaders after he leaves. Deacon Lord, if we don't get the food, we can't grow and now go out into Avon Park streets and impact the community. And when people see the light, we can cause an economic change. All right. But if he sits still and don't say nothing and just treat this like it's just a normal servant, then we could die. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Preach, son. Something happened to me over the weekend. I was in the hospital. and I was in the hospital. And when I was in the hospital, I saw a lady fighting for her life. And while she was fighting for her life, she couldn't speak for herself. And so the people had to speak for her, her family, her brothers, her 
her daughters had to speak for her so they had to be in a state of sound mind because their words could be the difference for her between life It's important that you hear what I'm saying because it's not my words. It's the words of life. And when you hear God's word, he brings life. And he said, in that light is the light. Somebody got to see different than they used to see. And so Peter said, I'm looking in because I know what it feels like to suffer. All right. You know how it is to get up and go to the church and you see only a few and you're wondering, man, what's going on? I remember back in my heyday, just coming out of seminary, I had the word, I was on fire, I was doing all the things, and I know I had haters, we got haters in every bunch, but I was determined to be conservative, I was determined to lay that foundation, and I don't care what they may say about me, I may be different, I may not be like them, but I'm going to stay faithful to the truth. All right, God. All right, you, son. Amen. Thank and so we see this type of development produces wisdom. To the point that when people talk to you, you're not just talking. Not, not See, young people can talk because they ain't been through nothing this much, you know. And I can talk, but you can say stuff better than me, right? right. You've been there. You've been places I haven't been. But yet, the wisdom of God in my submission to God will elevate my mind to where I can mature in areas that my age can't reach. Thank you, sir. And so when he say to an elder, to an elder, I need you to understand these were young elders. All right. Thank you. Timothy was a young preacher. All right. They were young men. Most founding establishments were established off of young men. It was probably 1904, Daddy Brian, and then it was probably 19, oh, I mean, from 1914 or 13 that the Church of God by Faith was established, and these were young men that went around and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ and began to go to cities and preach and teach the Word of God because they felt that there was a need for the Holy Ghost and His presence among his people and if we believe God by faith solo fide in Christ alone in faith alone we are justified not by words come on now come on now it was here by faith was established alright sir and so it is here in this text we see why he has to preach why he can't slow down I don't care how old they are. They've been given a charge. Mm, yes, sir. 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 whom you exalt is to show true signs of humility. Peter does not announce his apostleship, but instead he says from an elder to an elder. Mm. 
Hebrews 4 and 15 says this, For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Watch this, but in all points were tilted as we were and without sin. Let us therefore what? Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, help. help. Because Peter puts himself on the same level Jesus puts himself. We have not a high priest. He comes down. Philippians say he came in a fashion of a man to serve the will of God. Can I ask you something? Can you be humble? All right. Do you always got to have the last word? When grandmothers and grandmamas or cousins or sisters come over, do you got to strut your stuff to let them know you're always in charge? Because your authority has nothing to do with how well you can persuade people, but it shows how well you can control yourself. So here Peter is defining and demonstrating uh, uh, what an elder is. Peter says an elder is a witness. Verse 1, he says the word elder here is the word presbyteros. It's the word senior, not a novice. Those that hold office in the church who exercise spiritual oversight over the flock and trust them. Peter was talking to seniors, co-presbyters, co-laborers, co-fellows with him in the gospel. But he was not talking to some newly person. Right. It's easy to be talking all that smack and you ain't done been through nothing. And that's how you can hear people say stuff like, child, I never, I never do that. Well, you ain't never live. Because I have learned the things that you say you will, I'm just going to preach it myself. The things that you say you will never do, you find yourself doing. Yeah. You ain't got to look at me like you're poly pure. Just look on the inside. They will never know I'm talking to you. And you can look straight up at me. And they'll never know I'm talking to you. I know it's, it's a type, but it's right. But there's some points in your life. Mothers, can we say that? Mothers, can we say that there are certain things in our life that we thought, that we knew, but then the more we got wise, we like, man, I know more now. Mothers, you know what? I can say the same. I'm 38 years old. I'll be, I'm about to be 39 on the 26th of February. I'm not broadcasting it, but my uh, Instagram account. Uh, but, but I have learned things now that I didn't know then. And I understand more now because of the level of maturity. But watch what maturity means, mothers, and, and my mature saints. Watch what maturity means. You got to suffer things you don't want to. I don't feel like going to work. I got three kids. I got to feed them. Not to mention my wife. So you say you're a man. Provide, protect. Come on, y'all know the man words. Can't be no man laying home that want to work in two jobs. That's crazy. Unless he's waiting on his social security. Come on, somebody. Y'all got to talk to me up in here. You shouldn't have nobody that you taking care of and the kids. Ain't nobody doing no job. Oh, uh, well, watch it. Even if you are, at least let him be doing something. Amen. You come home, your food there, money. You work some, didn't you? Didn't you have food? Didn't I make sure I had food? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah she worked. Did I make sure I had food? You can't, listen, while I'm on sending, that was a level of maturity. And I could be like, no, nah, I ain't feel like going to work. Mike and Kayla can I got to fend me on when I'm tired. Is that showing that I'm responsible now? But if my maturity says, I have to suffer things I don't want to. Right. Jesus says, something has come to pass, but I'm called to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord, my Jesus. Some stuff I got to shut up on mm -hmm. when I want to see a lot of them. Some stuff I got to sit down on and hey, glad that's when I want to stand up on. Some stuff I got to just put a stop on. Sit down. Have someone ever made you so mad? You ain't cussed. Y'all know you don't cuss. I don't know what you do. I don't know. So you, you know you don't cuss. And then somebody just, I'm talking about they got you. And you find this, get you. <sighs> y'all know what I'm talking about. That, that, when that time when your pressure gets so, and the maturity in you saying, these folks know that I'm serving God. These folks know I'm a Christian. They know the church I go to. They know what I'm doing. I can't act this way. And then the minute I act this way, what you think they going to say when they see me in church? I thought that was Elder Stevenson. I thought that was pastors. I thought that was this. Why? Because you're not looking like what you live. When well, watch what God says, Peter, so you don't look like what you live. I'm going to continue to pray for you, cover you, but I need you to train them like I'm training you, and I need you to let them elders know that in order to be a real elder, you got to go through some things in your life that you're not accustomed to. You're going to be cussed out. You're going to be talked about. You're going to feel like you're by yourself. You're going to be up nights crying. You're going to be up nights up and everybody sleep. You're going to be right when you don't really need to be right because you got that much on your mind. You may even run to a joint 
strength. I don't know what you're going to do to resolve this issue. But my Bible says they that keep their mind on me, him when they keep in perfect peace. You may find ways to alleviate the pain, but I'm saying if you follow God, seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. My Bible said that rest shall be added. He said if you commit your ways or works unto me. Well, I said if you acknowledge me in all your ways, Peter, I know you denied me, but boy, you so bad, you got hung upside down. You told people they could not strain concerning fiery trial. This was not Peter back in the book of Acts. This was not Peter arguing over with the Gentiles and the Jews or they right. This is not the Peter that fire and was warming his hands and denied Christ three times. This is not that Peter. This is the mature Peter. The elder Peter. The Peter that said, brothers, I know what you're going through. I said, I'm going to slide on the floor. So I guess I'll slide on the floor. I know what you're going through. And can I tell you is this? Let me talk to somebody. I got to go to the deck. Can I tell you? Listen, be shepherds to God's flock under your care. Responsible for, and I'm not just talking to Pastor Charter, but I'm talking to you. You're responsible for some things. You got things of under your care. Things are working in your hand. I don't care if it's a child. I don't care if it's your husband. I don't care if it's your wife, your sister, your brother, your cousins. You can't get along with nobody. Got that secondhand hatred passed down. I don't care what it is. God said, I need you to get that under control. I need you to know it's been given to your care. But God, I don't know. I have a word for it. I don't have an answer for it. It's driving me crazy. Then Paul, I'm going to tell you like I told you before. My grace is sufficient. But Lord, when I'm weak, say I'm strong. All right, then if God be for me, who can be against me? I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. You get to the point where you grow up and you say, yeah, it's not a novice. The elder ain't just no fly by night. Gay prophet Bobo. As a young man, when I was called to preach the gospel, I was scared to even say the thing about it because I revealed and respected the elders to know that if I was wrong, I wouldn't want to be embarrassed or humiliated because I wouldn't want to say something that God has said, thus be a castaway or some false teacher. And so I wrestled and I prayed and I cried and I prayed and I said, God, but I kept feeling the drive to say, preach this word. I kept hearing the word, but Lord, I don't know the Bible like that, but I kept feeling the drive to preach and then I happened to be so Silent because I have my two men around me that's been in the race for a long time and they know God and they saw God and things were done by the grace of God through their hands and so I was in a quiet position but yet God doesn't care nothing about the position you're in if I'm constantly calling you you either going to do it or I expose you for them all and then let them have time to sort it out but I'm going to do what I say to do but it led me to humble myself to listen to the elders it led me to work in the church an elder is one in the church. It's not outside because who are you called to? Remember an elder is oversight, overseer one of a maturity. He is called to help somebody. It led me to the church and it led me in the church. But I humbled myself and I said if God you called me then you have to look through all of this and come get me. If I'm that truly called to preach this word you're going to have to do something that only I know that's truly me and then if I got to come between getting killed, if I got to come between being personal if I got to come between somebody lying and say you ain't called, then I have the assurance and the boldness and the quality by your word, by your grace to say, oh yeah, I don't care what you say like I feel right now. I don't care whether people receive the word or not. I know I've been called to present the word. Now I do care that they get the word because I want them to get it. But the way they receive it, my Bible said according to Matthew 13, they have different grounds. People receive things differently. That's not my responsibility. But I want to give it out of the way that you can eat it. And that's when he goes to say, feed them right. Your maturity should help you feed them. So not only does Peter empathize, empathize with him, but Peter, now watch this, now he comes down and he becomes an example to them. He said, feed the flock. Don't beat them. Don't grieve them. Don't force them. Don't compulse them. Feed them. The Lord over them. You go, right. I say why. Wow. Right. Don't threaten them. That's right. 
Don't badger them. Don't abuse them. Feed them. I said, why? Oh, people are so hard-headed. They get up under your skin. I can't say nothing. They're going to just talk to me any kind of way. I can't say nothing. They're going to talk about my children. They're going to talk about my wife. They don't want to give a good, decent offering. I may have to work harder and harder, but I'm still committed. I'm, I'm going to do God's will. So I'm not committed to money, right? So I'm going to do God's will. So whether they pay me or not, I'm commanded to do this, right? So it's not about the money, but the Bible says, Muslim, the ox that not tread of the corn. If I'm feeding you, don't kill the one that's feeding you. Don't kill the one that's trying to build you because who's going to be your leader to watch over your soul? Yes, Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord. But he says, why not? Let me tell you why I think he's telling us not to. Because he said, I give you grace. You don't need to be, you don't need to be greed. You can lead. I give you the spirit to lead. God will give you the Holy Ghost to overpower certain things. Pastor was talking about power over sin. He came from Romans 6 when Paul was arguing justification by faith. And the writer said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue sin the grace we are about? God forbid, how shall we? No, you're not. As many of us were baptized into Christ, were baptized unto his death, meaning that our salvation was wrapped into his resurrection and not wrapped into our ethics. That his righteousness is his nature and my obedience is my faith in his work. That I believe in the finished work of Christ why has yet been worked out in me. My, my, my. And so the writer said because God has abundantly graced you, you can continue in sin because it's not the argument of grace, it's the argument of you are empowered. It's not the fact that if she shows up, Stevenson, or she shows up, Mr. or he shows up, sir, or the bride come or the money come or whatever make you fall out. <laughs> he says, it's the matter of my grace that I gave you. I got to end now because I'm doing my Baptist time is over. I don't even got a time out or a break. So I'm done. Mother and my mother, they have been there for a long time, right, Mother Boom? Been there for a little bit long, didn't I? So I'm about, I'm going to close it now. I'm going to close it. He said, I know Mother Boom. I know Mother Boom. She probably don't remember me. But, but watch this. So my thing is, God has empowered us as he preached this morning. And it's the power of God that gives us the ability to preach, to teach. It's the eagerness in us that gives us the desire to not to be dishonest. It's the, it's the quantity of my love and commitment for God, you know. Me and my wife have been married for 10 years, and we haven't always had the perfect marriage, but it's my commitment to God first. Me and love your wife is Christ with the church. It's my commitment to her second, and then it's my commitment to my own conscience. Watch this. That even if my flesh get out of line, I have something to reckon with. If you're your own Lord and you ain't got nobody else to reckon with you, ain't got no elder to an elder, a friend, order to them who's alone. You can't be by yourself. Amen. My Lord. He didn't mean for you to be by yourself. He wants somebody there with you. And so the pastor says, Elder Peter, not the apostle, he, he hold, put that on the side. Don't call me apostle today. Elder Peter says, Feed my flock. Now Peter says, not just feed them, but take oversight thereof. Mm -hmm. Not by constraint, not by willingness, not by filthy lucre, ill garden gain, but ready, but of a ready mind on what you want me to do. God, let's do this to help them. <clears throat> Either as being Lord over God's heritage, but being an example when you are a witness, when you are matured, and when the grace of God is before you and in you, people don't have no choice but to look at you. And now this is my clothes. Now you are an example. And the chief shepherd is ready to appear. You don't know when your time is. You don't know when that chief shepherd may show up for you. Not the end of the world eschatology, not the end times, Matthew 24, but I'm talking about your end of days. The lady who was laying in that bed had a heart attack on Friday in the and now was waiting to hear word as to
to where she would be from Friday to Saturday. And her word came round about, was it about four o'clock, three o'clock, about three o'clock, and they was gone. Why people was trying to decide whether to either resuscitate or whether to bring a lie or God had already made a decision. All right, God. And whether we know it or not, we're going to find ourselves in a position where somebody has to make a decision about our life. That when we stand before God, it's not about Michael was a good father, Michael was a good husband, Michael preached on the corner, Michael did this, Michael did that. They want, he wants to know, hey, was he well done, thou good and faithful servant? Did he deny himself and take up the cross? Did he bless those that curse him? Did he do good to those that despitefully use him? Did he die with the resurrection of Christ's power on the inside by confessing with his mouth and believing in his heart? And coming to Jesus as he lives and said, I am a sinner. Oh, you got to change me. If you don't change me, I'm going to die and go to heaven. Oh, and then God and the blood, his spirit, he says, you are forgiven. It's that one that we're entering. Peter was speaking to forgiven people. People that was already into the kingdom. That he needed to encourage to continue to work. We're in the kingdom. I know it gets tough. Mothers, I know you're living in a different age. I see it myself. Stuff we got to redefine now. What is a man? What is a woman? What is relationships? What is murder? Now we can kill a child that's deformed in full time. Do you not see why we have to keep preaching the gospel? Yes. You want to know what can save the soul of man? I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God unto salvation. You want to know what can deliver a man? There is no other name whereby under heaven and earth whereby men must be saved but by Jesus. Yes, We're not talking about the name J-E-S-U-S. We're talking about the work. W-O-R-K of Jesus. Stand to your feet. I want to tell you, Peter became a witness. And an elder, to an elder, pastor, to an elder, leader, to a young man. My Lord. I say to you, as Paul said to Peter, you have lived, you have lived many years beyond minds. You have saw many things in your eyes. I'm graced to know that God has continued to preserve you and your wife in this community at this time. Amen. We pray God continue to strengthen you and this church. Yes. We pray that the members that heard the word of God.